Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at my winter fill day loadout. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So for the last few days, I have been in an argument with myself, trying to figure out what I was going to take for winter fill day. Still not quite sure who won the argument, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside the bag. And I'll give you uh, my take on why I chose what I chose. So first up uh, on the outside of the bag, I am going to be carrying the Yezu FT3 DR radio. Now I'll also have my two meter everyday carry kit that I've done a video on in the past, but I like to have this one with me uh, simply because of the APRS capability and the system fusion capability. So that'll give me the ability to monitor the local repeaters in the area. Um, and use that without tying up the other radio. On the other side, uh, I've just got a water bottle. Uh, and this has just got a few little basics in it that I always like to keep with me. Uh, a little bit of paracord, uh, a water filter, another water bladder inside of it. I am going to be doing winter fill day at the off-grid cabin. Uh, so I really don't have to worry about shelter, food, or water because all of those uh, are kept at the off-grid cabin. And honestly, I could uh, do an entire winter fill day uh, using the batteries and the solar power at the cabin, but that kind of takes the fun out of it. So I do have all of the battery power I'm going to need stored inside this. Next up, let's start with this top pocket here. And this is pretty much uh, antennas. So I've got a roll-up J-pole uh, that always stays in this little kit. And guys, basically this is my little QRP kit that I did a video on a few months back but I've loaded it out with extra gear that I'm going to need uh, to operate the 24 hours of winter field day. But there's the uh, roll-up J-pole. My primary antenna is going to be my in-fed half wave. Uh, so this will give me 10, 15, 20, and 40 meters. I'm also going to press this uh, into service uh, with eight, or on 80 meters as well. Uh, but there's the antenna. Uh, a small section of coax I like to keep. This is really small uh, coax. I believe it's RG174, so I like to keep these runs as short as possible. I do have a longer section down uh, a little deeper in the bag. We'll see in a second, but uh, there is one of the short sections. I believe it's like 15 feet. And the only other thing in that pocket is an envelope that has the backup card for the Raspberry Pi, should uh, I have a need for that. Now, moving on down, let's take a look inside of this pocket. Uh, radio microphone there. So, this is one of the batteries. Now, this is a battery that always lives in this kit. For winter field day, this is going to be a last-ditch effort if I have to get to this battery. We'll kind of go over battery and numbers here in a minute. Uh, there's the longer section of RG174 that I was telling you about. I also have, uh, well, if I can get it out of here, I've got a throw kit. Now, I've started going to these clear bags uh, to kind of keep things grouped together in some of my various kits. I like these because, well, it keeps everything grouped together, but I don't have to open the bag up to see what's inside. I'll leave links to these bags down in the description below. Uh, in this little bag is a throw weight and some throw line to help us deploy the antenna. And last but not least inside this uh, pocket here is a little uh, battery bank that can be used to run the Raspberry Pi. Now in this particular kit I am running a Raspberry Pi 3 and if I remember during my test I got six hours of runtime on the Pi 3 out of this battery. That comes, uh, that comes into play here in just a few minutes. 
uh, when we're talking about uh, how much battery power I'm going to have. There's one other little pocket here on the outside. This is kind of an admin uh, pouch. I've got a couple of tent stakes. I've got a few pins. Uh, I've got a poncho, which I really uh, am not going to need since I'm going to be at the off-grid cabin. And I have a write-in-the-rain notebook. Uh, and that's pretty much all that's in that pocket there. I will have to say with this loadout, I have got this bag, uh, as you can see, packed about as full as you can get it. It's really not quite big enough uh, for this particular trip. I'm going to have to look at something else. The gear inside, I really didn't need my larger backpack. Uh, it, it wasn't enough to fill it up uh, even three quarters of the way, so I did go ahead and stick with a smaller pack which is fine for the QRP, the normal QRP kit, but in this particular case, it's just uh, not quite enough bag. Let's go ahead and dig into the main compartment here. Uh, first thing up is another one of those clear cases. This one's got the Raspberry Pi and all of the needed uh, cables, sound cards, things of that nature. So it keeps it nice and tidy in that one bag. Uh, let's see what else we got a power cable that uh, is used with the solar panel uh, And then I've got uh, the buddy pole power mini solar charge controller uh, Next up is the radio that I chose and this time I'm going QRP I really really prefer to run full 100 watt radios However, I've been looking at the weather forecast and it is two solid days of clouds and rain. So I do have a solar panel in here, but I really don't think I'm going to get uh, much power generation out of the solar panel. So I've tried to take that into account when it came to looking at the, uh, how much battery power I was going to need uh, to get through a 24 hour period. So this is the solar panel that I was telling you about. In this case, I'm going with the TP Solar. Uh, this is the 60 watt foldable panel that I've done a review on in the past. And guys, check the description if you want uh, more details on things like the solar panel. You want to see full reviews on that. You haven't seen them in the past. I'll leave links to that down in the description below um, for any of these products that I have done reviews on in the past. Uh, and then next up, we've got a couple of the Miati 8 amp hour batteries. So let's stop here and let's talk about battery power um, and assume that I'm not going to get any uh, power generation from the solar panel. The 817 radio, uh, if we're transmitting 50% of the time, and I know that may be a bit high, but it is field day, you are going to be hammering the radio pretty hard. So I assumed 50% transmit time. Um, calculating that out, it comes up to about 1.5 amps used per hour out of the battery for the radio and the Raspberry Pi. So each of the little Miati batteries should give me just over five hours of runtime, uh, powering everything up. So that's a total of 10, uh, somewhere between 10 and 11 amp hours using these two batteries. Uh, so that doesn't quite uh, carry me, even if I don't operate the full 24 hours, I'm obviously going to take a nap that evening, uh, but that still might not carry me all the way through if I can get absolutely no solar power. That's where this battery, the battery that's built into the 817, and the little battery bank come in. This is a BioNO 3 amp hour battery. There's also a 3 amp hour battery built into uh, the 817 or <clears throat> yeah, built into the uh, 817. So this battery should give me two hours and the battery in the 817 should give me an additional two hours. When I go to this battery or the internal battery, I will not be running the Raspberry Pi off of either of these batteries. Instead, I'm going to run it off of the power bank uh, that I've got. 
So if we've got uh, somewhere, let's just say 10 on the low side with these two batteries, I'll get a couple more out of this. That's 12, a couple more out of that one. Gives me a total runtime of about 14 hours. Um, that's probably going to be more operating that I want to do even on fail day. Uh, when you take out uh, time for eating and sleeping and uh, just taking a break from the radio, that's probably going to get me get me by for fill day. Of course, you guys know I'll follow up with an after action report when this thing is finished up. Uh, last couple of items in the pack is going to be uh, a tablet. <clears throat> so I've got the Amazon Fire Tablet here. That I'll be using. This is the 10 amp hour version, or uh, I'm sorry, the 10 inch version rather. I'm still stuck on batteries, I suppose. And then I've also got a uh, new keyboard that I'm going to be testing out uh, on fill day. Uh, one thing I do see that I haven't put in here yet is I may go ahead and add a uh, Bluetooth mouse to this kit as well. So that's everything in the primary bag. Now there's two things in addition to this that I will be carrying. First, and I just could not fit this into the kit, uh, but that's the little MFJ, let's see, 9201 tuner that I did a recent video on. I'm going to carry this with me. That way I can press the infed half wave into service on 80 meters. Uh, 80 meters can be a lot of fun after uh, after dark sometimes. So I do want this with me to give me that capability to get to 80 meters. Last but not least, I will go ahead and carry the toolkit uh, that I've put together. Now I've done a video on this in the past. I'll leave a link to that in the description. This will more than likely never leave the Jeep, uh, but I, it is something that on overnight outings especially, I like to have uh, a toolkit with me. It can get me out of a few jams, at least if they're minor. All right, guys, well, there's a look at what I'm taking for fill day. I hope you guys are going to get out and participate as well. I'll be running JSA Call and WinLink over the course of the weekend. I might work voice for just a little bit, uh, just kind of to break up the monotony. But more than likely, you'll catch me on JSA Call and WinLink. All right, we'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.